was it for crimes that I have done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity. everybody how are we feeling this morning praise the lord praise the lord we are here to give god thanks and praises let us stand as we pray on our song service let us pray father god in heaven we come before your presence this morning, to worship you, to adore you, to lift up your high and holy name. And as we're here, good Father, we pray and we hope that our worship will not be in vain. That as we gather here this morning, as many persons have come from the east, from the west, the north and south, singing praises unto your name. And to hear another word from you, we pray, good Father. That today will be a worship experience like no other. The souls will cry out. I'll heal, I'll heal. I cannot hold it no longer. Be with your people and give us a day's blessings, we pray. In your own son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we are going to start off by singing for a song service this morning. Number 34, rate the song of joy and gladness. He the bring your noblest ladies. Where the song of joy and gladness, he the bring your noblest ladies. Banish every thought of sadness, for him for joy.
The Lord is a rock, in him we hide. He is a shelter in the time of storm. You can sing a fish good this morning all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the good. Oh 
morning we're going to stand as we sing number 304 faith of our fathers living still let us all stand
pit of a father's living still in spite of God, John fire and sword. Oh, our hearts beat high with joy. Let every hand the glory. Pit of our fathers, pit of our fathers, holy faith. We will be true to thee till death. Our fathers chant in praise and start mercy in heart and conscience free. How sweet would be the Jesus. Faith of a father's holy faith, we will be true to thee to death. Faith of a father's we will love for friend and foe in all our strife. And please be true as love knows how by kindly words and birds. Oh, faith of our father's holy faith, we will be true to thee till Shall we bow our heads reverently as we seek the Lord in prayer? Let us pray. Kind Almighty God, our Creator, Redeemer, our Sustainer, and our Friend, it is after six days of toil and labor you have asked us to rest. Come aside whereby we can give a holy worship and praise to your name. This morning we deem it an honor to be gathered under this canvas cathedral whereby your children have gathered from far and near. We have come together, O oh God, with our hearts open to receive your blessings. Today, Heavenly Father, as we begin this another Sabbath day's worship here, we pray your Holy Spirit will come down in copious showers. We pray that hearts that are wondering, should I make this the right way to go? We pray that you will help them, dear God, not to wonder, but to make that forward step to say, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I pray in a special way, O oh God, that you will take full control of the day's proceeding. But in a very special way, we ask that more than anything else, may we leave today with our hearts so filled, and so receptive to your message. And when you shall come, because we would have given heed to your command, we will hear well done from your lips and have the joy of spending eternity with you when you come. Thank you for hearing and thank you for answering. And we leave everything now in your hands, in Jesus' name. Let me take you to the Hall of Faith. Pay attention. Think heavenward. Remember the word of the scriptures as we lead you through Sabbath school. The Hall of Fame. Here are some Bible characters which will help us, remind us, strengthen us, and our unwavering faith in God. This morning, Sister Sandra and I, we are 
at the hall of faith. And I want you to pay attention. Pray with us. Act with us. As we bring you back to the scriptures. Hey, Sister Rodney. Here is Rahab. Rahab was a harlot. The Bible says that Rahab, Rahab hid 12 spies that Moses sent to Jericho. Who are you talking about? He sent them to Jericho to view the land. While the men of Jericho looked for the spies, Rahab hid them in her home. She helped them to escape. And they promised that when they would come to destroy the city, she and her household would be saved. Rahab tied a piece of scarlet cord in her window, brought her family, and all of them were speared. You know what, Sister Rodney? Rahab reminds us that we too have value in God's eyes. This is interesting. Continue. Yes, and our faith and courage can be rewarded. The lineage of Jesus came through Rahab Amen. as well. Amen. Amen. Yes, Rahab had faith and she acted on it. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. May we be inspired by her faith and courage. That's Let the us word. trust. That's the word. Yes, let's trust in his promises and in his protection. Continue. Wow, over here we have Enoch. In the book of Genesis, the Bible says Enoch lived 365 years and he walked with God. Walking with God would mean he was humble, sincere, obedient, sacrificial, and he was faithful. The Bible says, and he was not. For God took him. You can imagine that? Yes. Continue. The Bible says the Lord saw something different in Enoch. Amen. He sees our potential as well. The Lord's message to Enoch was, don't focus on yourself, but focus on me, God. What is the message for us today? It is that when we walk, walking with God does not imply... Don't Walking with God does not imply looking at yourself. It's a process. And it implies also that it is progress. So walking with God, it is good. In enough time, he walked with God. We too can walk with God. Amen, amen. Sandro, but there are two other persons. Okay, Why yes. didn't you... Enlighten me on them. Well, right, let you me tell me about them. Let me take a closer look. Wow. Yes. Sandra. Yes. This is Sarah. Oh, wow. yes. Now, let us go back to Bible field. The Bible stated that Sarah was the wife of Abraham. Oh, yes. Sure. God has said to Sarah that she would conceive it was impossible in Sarah's eye. <laughs> God, you are talking foolish, this man. At my age. So Sarah laughed. Yes, Sarah laughed at wow. God. At my age, I passed childbearing a long time. This cannot be true. Sarah was thinking that for God to be faithful in his words, she must have seen it. Sarah was wondering, uh, God seems as if she, he's not looking that I am of age. However, God is a God of possibilities. Oh, yes. Amidst our impossibilities, God will always come through for us. All we Amen. need to do is to trust, trust him. him. Definitely. Wait on the Lord yes. and be of good courage. Oh, yes. It happens. And Sarah realized that God is a God of his word. Yes. He never changed. Today, my Christian friends, remember whatsoever God has planned for us, whatsoever God had promised us, 
He will fulfill his promise. Just be faithful. But there's, there's another one, Sister Rodney. Who, can he, who is he? Guess. He has a knife. I'm going Would to that be Abraham? Wow. Wow. Abraham. A man of faith. A man after God's own heart. God has said to Abraham, take your only son. And he asked him to go into a country where he knows nothing of. Yes. But Abraham trusted God. And even though he wasn't clear of his destination and what would have taken place, one thing Abraham holds on to, and that God will supply our needs according to his riches in glory. Oh, yes. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Abraham went on his journey. But God, he is a God that will always do what is best for us. Oh, yes. He just needs us to be obedient to him. And Abraham followed, even though the path was not completely clear. Yes. Abraham had shown a firm and unwavering faith. Today, I want us to adopt the faith that Abraham had shown in the command of God. Follow God, even though the path isn't clear. Trust God's promises and face adversities, believing that God is there for us. Boldly ask God for him to save and help us around trying times. And believe that when we ask believing in obedience to him, he will come through for us. Expect God to do great things. Even in the path of impossibilities. Remember, God is a God of possibility. Amen. Be willing to take risk. Be willing to give your all to him. Because he will come through for you. Be bold and courageous. Yes. Be strong. Yes. And have faith in God. Because he is. He will Come through for you, whatever the situation. Fear not. Pressed on, never doubting. Or a captain is near. With grace to supply and with comfort to cheer. Believe in God. Hold on to him. Be faithful, my brother. Because when the end comes, a great reward is there for us to enjoy. And to be happy with our master there ever after. My, amen, amen. The hall amen. of faith. Yes. Sandra, yes. if I have time, I would love to spend all day reflecting on the faithful patriot and matriarch of it God. It is easy. It all is we so need good. to do, Sister Rodney, is just continue reading Hebrews chapter 11 and let us emulate what, God, what those persons have done. Because as you have said rightly, all things are possible if we only believe. And it's impossible to serve, to please God without faith. faith. Amen. Let us keep plugging to the source. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But things change when 
You're down in the valley Don't lose faith, Paul You're never alone For the God on the mountain Is still God in the Good morning, everyone. How good it is to be gathered together in God's house for worship and for reflection. As you are aware, this week we have been studying for, well, for the entire quarter, we've been looking at the book of Psalm. And we have been looking in particular, Brother Prince, at worship. 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 Let me just say that this morning uh, we have been allotted a very minimum amount of time. And so Brother Prince and myself will attempt to summarize for you the salient points of this week's lesson. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let us just bow our heads as we pray. Please pray for us, uh, Brother Prince. Let us pray. Loving Lord and eternal God, we ask that you will come by us at this moment. Open our hearts. Fill us with your blessing. 
And may we go home rejoicing. Teach us now, we pray. May you alone be glorified in Christ's name. God's people say amen. Amen, amen, amen. This week's lesson has a very, very interesting theme. A theme that is loaded, Sir Prince. Loaded, very loaded. Worship that never, never ends. Never ends. What is it, everyone? Worship that never ends. And just by looking at the theme, it, 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 it brings to our mind the fact that the things that we start here on earth will continue. Every exercise of worship, every word of praise, every moment of glory that we give to God will continue in the great beyond. Amen? Or as the new heaven. And Amen. The new earth. Amen. Uh, all Amen. flesh comes Amen. to worship Amen. before me. Indeed. Worship never, ever ends. The memory text is taken from Psalm 104 and verse 33. Let us all repeat that together or read it if you have it. Let us go. It says, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. While I have my being. This side of heaven, nothing is guaranteed. On this side of heaven, there are challenges that we experience from day to day. And so while we are alive and while we are able to, while we are in our rightful minds, at least for this psalmist, he says that he will do what? He will sing praises unto the Lord. What then is worship? What is worship? Have you stopped to contemplate what worship really is? The fact is, Brother Prince, that worship is a response. Are we in agreement? Amen. That worship is a reaction. It therefore means that someone has to do something. There has to be something to which we respond or something to which we react. The fact is that all of us as human beings are what? We are creatures. And our worshipful response is to our Creator. Come on, everyone. It's to our creator. It's to our creator. There are two biblical truths that we'd like to point out. God has given many blessings to humanity. Do you agree with that? Come on now. Are you alive this morning? Are you in your rightful minds this morning? Has there been food on your table? Are you safe? And all of that is the mercy and the blessings and the grace of God. And so in response, what do we do? We show gratitude. We give thanks to God for the things that he has done for us, Brother, Brother Prince. Right. So as human beings, we are endowed with an innate predisposition to response to the wonders of God. You know, oh, yes. it says on, on Monday that we should worship the Lord with a new song. Mm -hmm. And new songs were sung as response to some new work of redemption. You, some you, you new know, Prince, work let me that just God would have just done for us. Do you know or do you recall that in the Bible, the names of God were a response to people's experience, experience. that they had with God? Do, do, do you have a special name for that special love in your life? Anybody inside here? Hmm? Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Nobody inside here is married. No one inside here is in love. But I'm sure there are people online, Brother Prince, who are in love. Amen? Amen? Amen. No, 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 no. The point I'm making is that the new experiences are the result, Brother Prince, of what? What God would have done. The, the new songs are the response of what, what God, God would, have, would done have done in each individual life. In each individual <laughs> life. Now, the Bible says new every morning. Come on now. New every morning is thy love. You, you, you know, as Christians, we like to sing. Every day with, come on now, every day with Jesus is sweeter. sweeter than the day before. And what the lesson here is reminding us, Brother Prince, is that this, these new experiences are every single day. You know, sometimes we have old experiences in brand new ways. Oh my, the church is asleep. Sometimes, Brother Thompson. New experiences, old experiences in brand new ways. And, and the fact of the matter is, learning about God is a matter of degrees. Sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. 
We get deeper and deeper into God's word. And the deeper we get is the more we learn of him. Do you think that as human beings we can ever exhaust the knowledge of God? Do you think as human beings we can ever get to that place where we know everything there is to be known about God no. or the Prince? Uh, no. no. So it is that new experiences with each passing day that gives us those new songs. New songs. So, and some of those are the joy of knowing him as maker. Another point is know that God saves us. We can rejoice about that. Know that he is still with us no matter what happened. All right? And know that God will finally take us home. Amen, right? amen, amen, amen. So worship comes from the heart. And this is one of the key points made in the book of Psalms. Where does worship come from? The heart. It comes from our heart. But, you know... There are some persons who say they can stay home and worship God. Are, are we together? There are some persons who say we don't, they don't need to come to a church, Brother Prince. They oh can stay home and worship God all by themselves because after all they say God is everywhere present. God is everywhere. But you know the Bible here in Psalm 134 invites us to worship God where? In, where, the, where, Brother in, Prince? The, sanctuary. in the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. So worship must take place where? Yes, in our private times, in our private spaces, but worship must also take place in, in the, the, sanctuary. the sanctuary. And another point to note that worship goes beyond just singing songs. Oh, come on now. Uh, worship come go on beyond now. just giving tithes. Oh, yes. Worship oh, yeah. go beyond just bringing offerings. Yes. Worship go way beyond that. Worship is showing reverence, respect to God. So worship... In all your ways... Acknowledge, acknowledge him, him and, and he, he shall, shall direct amen, your path. amen. So worship involves the entire human being. Entire human being. All our gifts, all our talents, all our resources, everything that we, ha we are should do what? Should praise the Lord. Are and, we together? And, and rightly, this is sums up in love. Oh, yes. In love. Oh, yes. Because when you look at, at, at some of the points that in true worship, he who is upright and does not tell lies. Oh my. Uh, that oh sounds my. like a commandment, right? So, so worshiping God is showing love to him and love to your fellow man. Amen? Amen. 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 So as we worship, we worship God with all that we are and with all that we have, with every single thing that we possess. But, you know, the, the Bible calls on us, though, to worship God also in spirit and in, in truth. truth. And in doing so, it reminds us that God does not accept every act of worship. Are we together? God does not accept every single act of worship. After all, if we go back to the book of Genesis, we see this message being brought out. Because the two brothers, having been taught by their parents to worship God, worship God. both brought their gifts to God, offered their worship to him. But the Bible tells us that God accepted one and rejected the other. Yeah. So, Important in worship is the heart. Are we together? <laughs> Important in worship is the, the condition of our hearts. Are our hearts, is our heart right with God? And, and the point to know, there was something that jumps out at me. It says that the worshiper's greatest quality before God is a perfect heart. Oh my. Is a perfect heart. A perfect heart. So as we worship, we must be mindful every time we come before God of the condition of our heart, of the issues of our heart. The Bible challenges us to guard well the avenues of our soul. So we ought to ensure that our heart is right with God. Remember, at the end of the day, we can fool man, but we can't fool God. So what motivates the new song we said before are the things that God has done for us. Now, God is a God of justice. Isn't that so? And so he judges aright. Hmm? You, you, you know, the psalmist in, one, in Psalm 149 verse 5 invites us to what? Even in the midst of illnesses, even in the midst of persecution, of suffering, of frustrations and the pains that this life brings, the psalmist reminds us that even then we can do what? Worship. 
We can worship God. We can praise the and, and Lord. And thing to note, he says that a new song can yes. depict a fresh song that no one has ever heard before. A yes. song that commemorates a vivid experience of God's grace in one's life. You know, when I, when, I, when I became a new convert in 20, 2019, I remember I was there and I was all over the place, not knowing where to turn. And I went to Santa Cruz Church yes. and I heard the song. Hymn 500, yes. take time to be holy. Oh. For me, that was a new song, yes. a new experience, yes. and joy, knowing that Amen. the words Amen. will take residue to Amen. my heart. Amen. Now, now, it's interesting that Brother Prince makes this point. Because when you look at worship, and in the Old Testament in particular, there were a set of persons who were leading out. And who were those? Those were the, come, those were the priests. Those were the priests. But how are things today? Do we require priests in order to worship? Do we require priests in order to bless God and praise his name? Come on now. For the Bible says, after all, that all of us are what? We are a priest. royal, come on, a holy nation. And so all of us as individuals can come before God. But watch us now. As we come, who, the condition again of our heart. He who is upright and does not tell lies can come to God and worship and praise him. The one who does not slander or listen to gossip can come to God, worship, and praise him. He who honors, honors those, those who, who fear, fear God, God. Wow. can come to Very God powerful. and praise him. And he, he says, he who does not change the word, he has given even when he is armed. Oh boy, this is tough. <laughs> That's tough. This is tough. <laughs> you know, when we, when we, when we were youngsters... I don't know about you, but I know when I was younger, we used to play some games. Uh, sometimes we would play a game called ship sail. Or how many men on board? But you enter the game knowing that, 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 that if the person guesses the correct number of corns in your hand, you're supposed to give it to him. That's it, God. But, 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 but when we don't want to give it, what we do? Drop some. Sink some. <laughs> isn't, isn't that how we did it? But the Bible is here saying to us that we even when it harms us, we are to honor our word. Amen. Amen. Also, it says, he who helps without desire to benefit from it. Mm -hmm. He who does not tolerate injustice. Mm -hmm. And that one who is of a pure heart, a pure feelings, and yes. pure desires. Amen. 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 So as we seek to wrap up this morning, as we told you, we have a very, very limited time. Let us remember that we worship God because of who he is. We worship God because of what he has done. Are we together? The Bible says, after all, in John chapter 3, verse 16, that, we, that what? God so loved that he gave everything he had. It is interesting, my grandmother used to say, Brother Prince, that with God, he says, give me all or nothing at all. But Satan says, give me just a little piece. And when you give him the little nub of the finger, he doesn't stop till he takes the arm. And from that, he aims for the entire body until he has you in total control. The point we're making is that with God, worship is voluntary. Amen. Are we together? God doesn't force us to worship him. With God, worship is voluntary. And worship, Brother Prince, must come from a place of love. Of love to God. Amen. Thank you so very much for having us. And do have a spirit-filled Sabbath. Sandro, it's time to draw the curtain at the Hall of Faith. I just want to say to our worshipers with us and those on the online platform, I leave all of us with this thought. By faith, you accepted Jesus. You belong to him now. So, you also must grow in him by faith. You grow by giving yourself totally to him. 
you must give everything to him. Your heart. Yes. Your plans. Your life. Your life. Give yourself to Jesus to obey all his commands. You also must, must take everything he offers you. You must take him and his full blessing to live in your heart. He will be your strength. He will make you holy. He will be your helper forever. He, he will, will help, help you. you he obey. will help us to, to obey. obey. Thank, Thank you. you.
All right. Happy Sabbath, beloved. It is good to see all of you here on this blessed Sabbath day. So I want to welcome you to the doctrinal review section of our morning worship program. And today we're going to be looking at the subject of stewardship. Let me hear everybody say that. What are we looking at? Stewardship. We're going to find out what that uh, word there means. So what is stewardship? Let's talk about it a little. In Luke chapter 12, verse 42 to 44, Christ explains that stewardship is being placed in authority over possession or a household you do not own. All right? So I want to paint uh, a little picture for you of the dynamics of stewardship. There are three uh, entities, a part of the equation. There is the steward, which is you and I. There is the master, which is God. And there is the estate, which is all that God blesses us with. Now, as Christians, we are stewards to the things that God has blessed us with. And his word in building disciples with the expectation that we will be faithful and wise by operating in accordance with his will. For the earth is the Lord, says the psalmist, and what? The fullness thereof. And so it is not the role of the steward, it is not my role or yours, right, to dictate the will of the master, right? Or uh, uh, to decide for ourselves what is done with the estate based on our own desires. But we must manage the estate, the blessing that God bestows upon us according to God's will. And so the question then arises, will God find you and I fulfilling his will as his disciples when he returns? Will he find you and I maximizing the gifts and calling he has placed over our life, or will he find us like the servant in Luke chapter 12, 46 to 48, worthy of stripe? I want to close with the definition given for stewardship in the fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, fundamental belief 21. It says, we are God's stewards, entrusted by him with time, and opportunities, abilities, and possessions, and the blessings of the earth. 
and its resources. We are responsible to him for their proper use. We acknowledge God's ownership by faithful service to him and our fellow men. And by returning tithes and giving offerings for the proclamation of his gospel and the support and the growth of his church. Stewardship then is a privilege given to us by God for nurture in love and the victory over selfishness and covetousness. The steward rejoices in the blessing that comes to others as a result of his faithfulness to God. Here we end our doctrinal review. I pray you were blessed and that we will be better stewards as we live for the master. God bless. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. I don't hear the tent. God is good. All the time. He is excellent indeed at this point in our service. As was announced previously, it's a time for the blessing of babies. We are asking those persons who are here. And you have your babies to be blessed, to be dedicated. We invite you to... Come forward to the front at this time. And um, while, you're, while you're coming, are the babies here? Just checking, are the babies here? No baby? All right. Praise team. They will sing a song while the parents come forward with the baby. to be presented to the Lord this morning. What do you say, church? Amen. We are grateful that there are still parents who believe that they must carry their little ones to the Lord. Amen. And as a pastor, I just get in the name of the second child.
We have Damari Reed and Cordon Lawrence Morgan. Co is he oh? Cordon, Cordon, all right. Cordon um, Lawrence Morgan. We are grateful that you have taken these other ones here this morning. I charge you from the word of God found in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6. The Bible says in verse 6 onwards, And these words that I have commanded you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlet between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gate. What is the word saying to you this morning, parents and family members? It's one, God says his laws, his statutes must first impact your lives as parents. Right? A simple principle, you can't give what you don't have. Then he says, haven't subscribed to his words. They are in your heart. You are applying them. The Bible says, teach them diligently. In other words, one teaching might not do. Two lessons might not do. Three might not do it. But a lifetime of modeling Christ, a lifetime of teaching the word of Christ to your children, they will come to grow and know who God is. And so I believe today that the fact you're here, you're recognizing that these are gifts from God. And as you give them back, I hope and trust that you will not take them back from the Lord, but grow them to love the Lord. Is it your desire this morning, parents, to give back these little ones to the Lord, not withholding them from God or His purpose? Is it your desire? They have said yes. It does take a village to raise a child. They have taken them to this village out here, the church of the living God. We might not know them. This might be their first interaction, but I do believe that if we pray, God hears and God answers. And if you're saying as a church that we will support this family even today in prayer, I invite you to stand with me as we sing softly, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. And Pastor Parks, Parkins will come to do the prayer of dedication. Pastors will take the children. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Lord, this morning we have two young lives that we want to place in your everlasting arms. Lord, this morning as we take them in our arms, we pray that you may take them in your everlasting arms. We know indeed that from everlasting to everlasting you are God. So tonight, this evening, this morning, Lord, we want to say thank you for the blessings of life. Pray that you may bless these young ones in the various stages of development. Maybe they're God. Pray, loving Lord, that you may be with their parents. Help them to realize that they have a sacred responsibility. And that is to groom them in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. I pray this morning, Lord, that indeed you may be their God. May you protect them from all harms and dangers. May you order their little steps in your words. May they never be possessed. May they be never possessed by any evil spirit. But, oh God, we know that we live in a world that is filled with devils on every side. I pray, loving Lord, this morning that you may pronounce your blessing on them. Indeed, may they 
grow to bless and to praise your name. Pray that you may be with their homes. Pray that you may guide and protect them from all arms and dangers. Pray we provide for them all the necessities of life, food, clothing, shelter, more so a happy home and a peace of mind. And I pray above all, Lord, that your will be done in their lives. Thank you, Lord, for hearing. And thank you for answering. For as we ask all these mercies with thanksgiving. In your wonderful and majestic son's name we pray. Amen. day right and we are happy in the Lord correct well all right then happy Sabbath God's people all right and happy Sabbath to my family online joining from Facebook and YouTube we see you now isn't it the most awesome feeling to know that after a long and a trying week we can forget about the week, lay our problems at Jesus' feet because he takes care of them, and just concentrate on him and truly, truly worship him. Indeed, the awesome privilege is mine to welcome you all, both here and online, into fellowship with God and each other. The third Sabbath, Vin Ashel, of our Footprints of Hope evangelistic series happening right here at 10 Square in Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth. And boy, what an amazing time we've been having. Somebody Definitely. say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Indeed, they say time truly flies when you have fun, right? Oh, but we're not done yet. And so today the fun continues and I pray that our hearts will be truly blessed, that we'll feel the presence of the Lord in this place and that we'll just receive all the blessing the Sabbath day brings. My name is Camille Orr and my sister in Christ is... Vin Asher Simmons. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Indeed, Sister Camille, cannot believe that three weeks have gone by and what a grand time we have been having here at 10 Square. Now, I don't understand why some people say that church is boring. I don't either. Worshiping God is anything but boring. Amen. And it is the best thing that you can find yourself doing at the end of every week. And so we invite our online family to share the link with everyone that they know and also to subscribe so that you'll be informed of each time we go live. God has been using his man servant in a mighty way with songs of praise, the music, the word. What a time it has been down here. Now, we here at 10 Square believe in worship and fellowship. And so this evening, we're inviting you all to come on out as we'll be having a Footprints of Hope Grand Social with the mm. vibrant AY Storm. Mm. And yeah, I think you have to get ready to do your 24 bounces to come I'm ready. So we invite you all to come on out later. And so we turn over to the praise team as we lift up the place and give God all the glory that is due to his name. Right, and as we continue with the worship here today, we're going we're gonna to ask you to join with us with your praise and worship. And I want you guys to just please to sing. Like all of us, we're here to worship. We're here to what? Worship indeed. And when the praises go up, the blessings will come. Indeed. And now we're going to begin. He alone is worthy to worship.
Shall we worship the Lord? And let us stand for our theme song. Let us stand. Wherever you are, on the outside, under the tent, let us stand for our theme song.
remain standing for our call to worship. Our call to worship this morning comes from the 67th division of the psalm. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Gracious Lord, today as we come in your course, Lord, we are so happy that we can come in this fashion to worship you. Oh Lord, we know that this unending worship around your throne in heaven, as the angels sing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. This morning, Lord, as we come to worship you, I pray in a special way that you may pronounce your blessing on every worshiper. Oh God, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. I pray today, Lord, you may imbue your man servant as your word will be proclaimed today. Individuals will accept the truth and go to the water where they'll be baptized, symbolically die with you to raise to walk in newness of life. Oh Lord, today we are so happy to be in your presence. Gracious with your blessing and may your name be honored be exalted and be glorified in your wonderful and majestic son's name we pray amen amen we remain standing for our opening hymn hymn 21 immortal invisible our ministers and music will lead us there
Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Are you happy to be alive? If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you're happy and you know it and you just want to show it, lift both hands and give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Our God is worthy to be praised. Pastor Allen, we just want to join with the evangelists. We want to join with the over 1,500 individuals underneath this tent and around the surrounding in welcoming those who are joining us from across the globe. I want to welcome those who are joining us from across the Caribbean, Pastor Allen. I want to welcome those who are joining us all the way in the USA. What about those in Canada? Well, probably even in Africa. Oh, bless the Lord. We are happy for those joining us in Europe. Well, let me come home. I'm yes. happy for those who are joining us right here under the tent. Praise the Lord. And Pastor, I want to join with you because I know that there, there are those who are joining us from across the 14 parishes of Jamaica. And there is no other place to be like where? Right here under the tent. But the question I need to ask you, I need to know how, how well you did in social studies. I know we are in the parish of what? St. Elizabeth. Let me hear an amen from St. Elizabeth. Amen. What? Go give me another parish. Uh, St. James. <laughs> Those who are from St. James, let me say praise the Lord. What about Hanover? Hanover. Oh, well, if they're not here physically, we know that they're watching. They're watching. Come on, place in the chat where you're watching from. We're, we're happy that you have, you have joined us. And it is our privilege to welcome you to the Footprint of Hope Gospel Series. Pastor, it is a good time. To get acquainted. To get acquainted. It is a good time. Let's show them how we do it out here at Footprint. Stand together. Let's, let's stand together. Find somebody. Greet somebody. Let's stand together as we sing with our praise team. Find somebody you have never greeted before and greet them in the name of Jesus. This, this is the place to be. This is the place where a welcome awaits you. And we look forward to the day when Jesus himself will usher us into the everlasting kingdom. Welcome, welcome, and stay welcome. I want to send a shout out to uh, the Balaclava Church. I know that they are streaming, they are watching the program, they are joining in with us, and we know that there are others in other places that are joining in, and we are blessed just to have you. And there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but, but to, trust to trust and, and obey. obey. We want to deal with a few housekeeping matters, uh, a few announcements, things that we want you to pay attention to. Now, today, today uh, promises to be a very special day, Pastor yes, Allen. Yes, I, 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 I know that we had to relocate some, some individuals. It's because we have a massive baptism coming up. And they are candidates that have been signed up uh, for the Christian Jubilee. So this, this, come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together for all those who have signed up today. And I know that there are those who have come. You may not have come prepared, but you are, you are here today and you just want to say yes to Jesus. This area is reserved for those who want to give their lives to Jesus today. Pastor Allen. Yeah, and I just want to join Pastor Blair in expressing 
um, or, or, or sadness in the fact that some persons were asked to be unseated and it never came across well. We apologize for that. Our, intention, our intentions were never to um, cause any harm or, or you know, ill feeling. And again, if, if you are outside and you wish to be seated, we'll try our best. But you can see, as it is now, we are, we are, all, well, we are above capacity, yes, yes. really. But we are, we are, again, we are sorry if, if there is any ill feeling towards that. And we will try um, next week to make a little bit more preparation. And I don't know if we will ever be able to make sufficient preparation for everybody who is coming out here. But we still welcome you um, in coming to worship here. Bless the Lord. And, and, and it's a good problem to have when individuals are turning up to hear the gospel. Let me hear you say amen. And uh, we join, I join Pastor Allen in apologizing to those who don't have a seat uh, today. But, but you can be assured that if you love the Lord, there's a seat in the kingdom of God for amen. you. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. So let, let, let's just, just, just let you know that camp comes up uh, this, this coming Thursday. That's Easter camp and it will be held at the, the Magate High School. So if you have not yet signed up for camp, we ask that you do so. There is an online registration and we want to ensure that all our youngsters get the opportunity to go to camp. I'm also told that the Magate District, the Goshen District, and the Silo District Federation will be having an election right after the baptism uh, today. We also want you to know about the social, Pastor Yes, Alan. I want you to know that this evening, after sunset, after the evening service would have ended, there will be a massive fellowship right here. Amen? Footprint Social. Footprints Social style. AY Storm will be coming in to host the social for us. And I want you to know, friends, that as God's people, our lives are not in segment. We are not just spiritual beings. Yes. Amen? Amen. And so we're asking you to, to go, well, to stay with us if, if you have your change. If not, um, you need to go on to get back. Bring your, your flats and let's enjoy ourselves as we fellowship. There will be a few items that will be available for your refreshment at a minimal cost. So we ask you to come and to support the social uh, this Saturday evening. Amen. And there is lunch for all visiting friends. But I, I as I said uh, on Wednesday evening, walk with your five loaves. I know that somebody is here with more than five, so we'll be able to share together. Praise the Lord. I have a key. I have a key. I was told it is not the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> but it it's, seems to be a key to yeah. a Nissan car. A Nissan vehicle. <laughs> All right. So we have your key. If you have lost your key, uh, you can come and, and, and collect it uh, from us. There is a birthday celebration cele celebrant in the in the house. Douglas Wright is celebrating his birthday, and we say happy birthday. Uh, to uh, brother Douglas Wright. We also extend condolence to Sister Parchment. You lost your husband uh, earlier this week. We want you to know that we are praying for you. And finally, finally, wherever you are coming from, we thank God that the journey took you to 10 Square today. Amen. If you have not yet signed up for the Christian Jubilee, today is the day. Now is the time. To make your calling and election sure. May God bless each of us and may the kingdom be populated based on the decisions that we shall make today. May God bless you. Have a wonderful time in the presence of Almighty God. God bless you. Good morning everyone. Happy Sabbath. Fixed my mind on another time, on another time, and here I mean to stand until God gives me more light. 
that is today, today, today until he comes. I have fixed my mind on another time, on another time. I have set my course on the narrow way, on the narrow way. For I know the time is close at hand for which I watch and pray. And that is Today, today, today until he comes. I have set my course on the narrow way, on the narrow way. Even so. Good morning, Christian friends. Indeed, we are blessed and highly favored. Amen. And so we have come to the time of our program when every one of us here can participate. What do you say? And we have come to the time where we give back what the Lord has blessed us with throughout the week. And so I know that the Lord has blessed us tremendously this week. We are here in living colors. 
We are here in our right frame of mind, healthy and strong. And for that, we ought to give God thanks. And so I want to encourage us to get in our purse, in our pocket, and give, give honestly and give godly to the Lord to finish spread this everlasting gospel. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your blessing. We thank you, Lord, for life. We thank you, Lord, that you have bring us here unmolested today. And as we give to the cause of your work, I pray, O oh Lord, that you will continue to bless your people. Continue to bless this tent. Continue to bless every single individual here, Lord, who is giving today. Keep us now. Guide us. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. We serve a mighty God, would you say amen? amen? This time I invite you to turn your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 16. I'm going to read from verse 
22 in your hearing. Acts chapter 16 from verse 22. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the, the, the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loose, and the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword, and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord. And all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night. And washed their stripes. And was baptized. He and all his straightway. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us all stand for prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we come to you one more time. We know, dear God, that you are faithful. We know that you are just. You are the Christ behind the cross. And you are the Christ before the cross. You can fix what is broken today, Lord God. We come before your presence believing that you are the God of the impossibilities. Father, you are a great physician. You have never been to a university. You have never received a doctorate. But yet still, you are the great physician. You can heal any sickness. Oh God, you can solve any problems today. We are here today before you as your children. We ask you, dear God, to look down upon us and have mercy upon us. Some of us are here broken, Lord God. But you alone, dear God, are the savior of the broken heart. 
we pray that you may mend us today someone came here for hope someone needs answers I pray before this service is over someone will say I have found Jesus my living Savior I pray for those dear God who are going to be in the watery grave of baptism father they have one more last chance and one more prayer to say Lord I surrender let not the enemy hold back that person today but let your Holy Spirit move upon that person to say Lord I'm coming all the way with you today in the name of Jesus thank you for the pastor pastor Samuel sometimes we don't know how we do it Lord God in preaching every night but Lord you promise to renew his strength as an eagle you promise oh God to wet his lips by the power of the Holy Spirit and I pray as he preached today there are God the number of those candidates that are going to go to the watery grave of baptism many will be added in the name of Jesus to follow thank you Lord God for blessing us today we have came from afar but Lord you are faithful and I pray dear God that you will supply our needs according to your riches in glory father you said seek and he shall find so we seek you today pray and we believe dear God and we are confirmed that you're gonna work on our behalf today in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the Holy Ghost amen and amen you may have your seats God bless
Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath, church. God is good. And all the time, it is indeed a privilege for us to be in the tabernacle of God. Amen. It is a privilege to, for us to gather and worship in this fashion. Amen. Today, the task is mine. The mammoth task is mine to introduce the speaker. He is a man of God. He is a renowned international evangelist. I speak of none other than Pastor Glenn O. Samuels. Amen. However, before Pastor Samuels graces the pulpit, we will have a song of meditation by the anointed ones. They will come to water our souls and lift our spirits, after which the voice you will hear will be that of the international evangelist, Pastor Glenn O. Samuels. Amen. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath, visiting friends. God is good all the time. God is. He's excellent. If you are here today and you need a special touch, Jesus is passing. I will not allow him to pass without touching him. And with that one touch, I promise you, as the word of God says it, we will be made whole today. Just don't touch him physically, but touch him. Let our hearts touch Jesus today. Amen. A woman one day tried many physicians, but they
about my faith this morning. And virtue is will we leave Jesus' body and will heal from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Praise God. This is my testimony, brothers and sisters. Oh, yes. One day I sat by the wayside begging. Nobody to help me down life's weary way. Then my Jesus passed by. He listened to my loud crying. You know what? Jesus reached out his hands and he touched me that day.
Lord our God. How excellent is your name in all the earth. Your glory rises above the heavens. And yet you have chosen to tabernacle with wretched sinners like ourselves. We thank you for saving grace. We thank you, God, for the invitation to salvation. Praise the Lord, amen. We ask that you would come. Come, thou fount of every blessing. Tune our hearts to sing your praise. Tabernacle in this place today. God, this weak, frail lump of sinful clay needs the covering of your blood. Take my mind. Realign my thoughts. Calm thou the troubling spirit resident in my soul. Climb down deep inside Isilda's sinful boy. And for the glory of your name, do what only God Almighty can do. May your will be done. May your kingdom come, is our asking in Jesus' name. And together we say, Amen. Amen. It is my joy to welcome you to this place today. And I pray the living God that he would take control. That he would do what he wants done. And I told you last evening that our time together may be shorter than you think. I hope you can read between the lines. And I pray the living God that you won't miss any of our meeting times. It is my joy to welcome those who've traveled from Montego Bay, from Old Harbor, from Maypen. I got an early text this morning from someone in South Carolina. I hope you're watching. And I gave her my word. She has been working with her niece in, in Horton. And I, I gave her my promise that I'd try to get her niece here. My apologies for those who've been quarreling with me that you can't find the link for the footprints. Stuff happens. And I hope you are together. I need your prayers. I need your prayers. And I mean that. Well, let's see what God will do today. Would, let me ask uh, all of the candidates and persons uh, for baptism. We don't want you to be scattered. And so we're going to ask our Bible counselors I have no problem if you walk around to look for your candidates because that's our primary reason for being here. I'm going to shorten our discourse today. So let's go straight to the book of Mark. What book did I say? The book of Mark. And while you're looking for that, tomorrow evening we will be looking at a question that has bothered the minds of many. Who changed the Bible Sabbath? Who changed the Bible Sabbath? And then on Tuesday, we begin a three-part message from a single pericope, that of Revelation 14, 6 through 12. 
As we talk about an urgent email, God's final message to a lost planet. Today, the song that we just listened to betrays the direction of the preacher's mind. The story is documented by Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And to get the full gist of our story, we need to read through the eyes of the three gospel writers. In Mark chapter 5, we're introduced to a typical day in the life of Jesus. Jesus is my kind of a preacher. He's, he's never, ever the kind you'll find with nothing to do. He's always busy. He's always busy. He's always engaged. He's always doing stuff. And when the times seem to be not enough in the eyes of others, he, he, he said to them in John chapter 9, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day because the night is coming when no one can work. It was a typical day in the life of Jesus. He had just gotten out of the boat, according to Mark, and he, he bumped into this urgent issue. It was a man who would be cutting himself. He lived among the tombs. He was literally living out in the wilderness among the buried ones. It's like Jesus to go out of his way to bring hope to the lost to bring peace to the disturbed, to bring healing and salvation. And that's how Mark starts the story. The second piece, as far as Mark is concerned, is a journey, the Bible said, uh, the man who was fixed up from among the dead, among the tombs, he went everywhere publishing what God has done for him. And it's, it's, it's amazing that church can be filled with a lot of churchgoers. And yet God is short of witness. It's disturbing that church can be filled up every Saturday and every Sunday with churchgoers. But in the week, he doesn't have witnesses. It's funny how church can be filled up and yet God is desperately searching for somebody to witness for him. This man having been delivered, the Bible said he went everywhere publishing the good news of what Jesus has done for him. And as... Jesus moved from that encounter. The Bible said he got back to the preaching staff. And behold, verse 22, one of the rulers of the synagogue, he's a church man, Jairus by name, when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. The Bible said he is a ruler of the synagogue. You want to understand, doesn't matter how high your church position, there are some things in your life that position can fix. It doesn't matter how big the Bible you carry. It doesn't matter how high you jump and shout. Doesn't matter how many times you speak in tongues. There are some things that only Christ can fix in your life. And immediately he fell at his feet. That's total surrender. He fell at his feet and besought him greatly saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay your hands on her and she may be healed and she shall live. If you look at the text, you see the intent of his heart 
my little daughter, every father, no, no, let me fix that. Every good father loved their daughters. Could I see the hands of the good fathers in the house today? Every good father loved their, I know that, that some men boast about their sons and they say that, that, uh, you, you only, you, you're a man only when you have sons but can I fix that for you the Bible said let every living thing bring forth after their own kind that's ordinary stuff now to bring forth of the opposite kind that's the extraordinary stuff are you listening to me I, I said let every living thing bring forth after their own kind that's, that's regular stuff uh, so, so that a breadfruit tree can only bring forth breadfruit that's after its kind. But when the breadfruit tree begins to produce East Indian, you know that it takes a special kind to do that. I, I'm done with that. Let, let, let me move from that. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just putting it in perspective. The Bible said that, that he, 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 he bowed at the feet of Jesus and he said, my little girl eh, eh, lieth at the point of death. I wanted to come home and lay your hands on, on her and heal her and she shall live. So Jesus was now on his way to the home of this ruler of the synagogue. I should tell you that a crowd was following him. Now, now hear me carefully. Crowds follow Jesus, some for fish and bread. Hello, somebody. I said, crowds follow Jesus. Some because of their material things. Uh, why do you go to church? Do, do you go only because of what you want God to do for you? Or you go because of how, God, how good God is to you? What if God should never answer another prayer for you? Would you still pack the tent? Would you still shout his praise? Would you still return your tithe? Would you still return your offering? What if God never uh, performed another miracle in your life? Would he still be your God? The crowd was following Jesus. And one day, according to Luke, he said some hard things. And many of those who were following him, Luke said that they stopped following. And Jesus turned to the others and said will you also follow the others will you also leave and Simon Peter said to whom shall we go we recognize that you alone you a-l-o-n-e you dege dege you. you you are the only one with life eternal so, so, so let the world do what the world wants to do we will follow you because you are the only one with life eternal listen to the preacher the crowd is following Jesus but there's somebody in the crowd who, who when you look at the Greek text when you look at the Greek text uh, the, 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 the Bible said that, that this silent sufferer turned to your neighbor and said silent sufferer there are some folks sitting right beside you sitting right before you sitting right behind you they are silent sufferers you know us, you know us we can be in the most intense depressing stuff and yet you ask us how are you and we smile and say fine thank you the truth is we don't bear our souls to any and anybody we don't let down our hair to any and anybody sometimes we are dying on the inside and we come to a place called church and church folk can be so preoccupied with their own stuff that they can't see they don't have spiritual perception they don't have the kind of eyesight they don't have the kind of spiritual eyesight to see that right in their presence somebody is dying somebody is hurt somebody is saying God if you don't fix it today I'm going to die are you listening to me here's a silent sufferer a silent sufferer suffering in a private place you see if you have your hand broken folk would tend to be kind to you because they see the external sign of your suffering and the crowd will, will, will tend to be kind to you, some of them. If they see a cast on your arm, they might not bounce you here and bounce you there because they see the physical sign of your suffering. But what do you do when the suffering is on the inside? 
and your bones everywhere by life. Your bones everywhere by vicious circumstances. What do you do when, when, when you're suffering and you're still expected to give? What do you do when, when the crowd can't understand your private pain? What, what do you do? And the text, the text uh, in our story, the text in our story, uh, allow me to read something for you. And the Bible said in verse 25, and a certain woman, unlike the text above that, they gave us his name, Jairus. Unlike some stories, they, they gave us their names. They introduced uh, their names to us. But in this crowd, she's just a member of the crowd. She's just a certain woman. Uh, no special degree, no, no special pedigree, no, no special uh, distinction. The Bible said a certain woman which had an issue of blood. She's identified by that which she's been struggling to get away from. I just said something. She's identified by that which she's been struggling for the past 12 years to get away from. But every day she's reminded. Every day she's reminded. And if you understand that the Bible said that life is in the blood. If you understand that. If you understand that you only have so much blood. And if you lose beyond a certain amount. You're going to lose your consciousness and then your life. The Bible said she's been hemorrhaging for 12 years. And to understand the context of what it means for her church life, the Le Levitical order was that she couldn't go to church. What do you do when the private stuff you're suffering with prevents you from going to the one place where you need the fellowship of the saints in connection with God? The Bible said in the context of her sojourn, not only is it that she couldn't go to church, the text doesn't say whether or not she's married, but if she were, she couldn't even allow herself to be touched by intimacy with those who were close to her. Because the Bible said, if anybody touches her, then those persons would be unclean. What do you do when the stuff with which you're struggling even allow others to treat you as social outcasts? Because if they come too close to you, they may be identified with the stuff you're struggling with. Or could it be, could it be, could it be that's why some church folk don't hop now with some people because they are too socially upright. They don't want to be touched. They don't want their good reputation to be, they don't want anybody to think bad of them. And so to, to, to preserve their pristine so-called righteousness, they, 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 they stand aloof. They, they walk by themselves. They drive by themselves. They come into church but they can't pick up anybody because they can't stand the likes of you they don't want anybody to question their reputation well, and so they they, they, they they stay away are you listening to me but I'm glad for Jesus he he uh, uh, my first if I'm running past it you see I was going to talk to you about three ifs I deal with just one today but if I had the time the first one was from a leper and the leper said master if 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 you want to you can make me whole. And Jesus said, there's nothing I want better than that. I'm glad I serve a Jesus who could touch the lepers. I'm glad I serve a Jesus who, who would go out of his way to find 10 lepers. Are you listening to me? Hear the preacher. Hear the preacher. The Bible said she's hemorrhaging for 12 years. Of all the things you now possess, what is the one thing you would give anything for? Of all the things that you have, what is the one thing that you do not want to lose? Of all the things you possess right at this moment, what is the one thing that stands head and shoulders above everything else that you can't afford to lose can I flip the script and ask the question another way 
of all the things that you do not now have, what is the one thing you would give anything for? Think of the question. So we come back to our text. A certain woman, a nameless woman, had an issue of blood. Leviticus 15, 25 to 27 tells us she couldn't go to the temple, couldn't go to the sanctuary, the synagogue, couldn't go to worship because of the silent suffering, the private pain, the private stuff that she struggles with. She tries to hide it behind a well set hair. She tries to hide her private pain, burying herself in activities. But, but there's something, and I'm trying to cut the word short today. Pray for the preacher. Are you listening to me? The word says, 12 years. Now in verse 26, the gospel writer uses a volley of Greek participles to graph the condition of the woman like a volley, a barrage of gunshots coming at her. It's not a revolver being fired at her. And Luke, in the context of the 26th verse, would use a, a, a volley of Greek participles to outline, to paint on the canvas of our mind, her predicament. Can we enter the mind of Luke having suffered many things, having gone to many physicians, having suffered under the hands of many physicians, having spent all that she had, having not gotten any cure, but having rather gotten worse. He pulls together these Greek participles. They are loaded. And when you understand that the Greek word that you, Luke, employs for suffering is the Greek word pasco, which means to be active on. Let me explain that for you. She didn't bring the suffering on herself but suffering was acting on her. She didn't bring it on herself deliberately. She didn't do anything to get it but, but it was being done to her. Have you ever been in a bad state where it wasn't your fault but you're suffering for it? The Bible said that, that not only is it that the Greek word pasco is in the passive context that speaks to the matter that, that she didn't bring this on herself by any active stuff but it was happening to her but, but, but there, there is a Greek word that comes before physician the Greek word U-P-E-R which means to suffer because of, to suffer up under, are you listening to me? So, so when you look at how Luke is painting the picture Luke is helping you to understand not only is it that she was paying these doctors but they were making her worse she was suffering up under their treatment are you listening to me she, she paid her money she tries to believe that this is where help would be coming from have you ever tried some source that you think help will come to you from you give your money you give your love you give your affection because in your mind you think that this is a source that will bring an end to your pain and into your suffering and he's like a woman she's already had five children but somehow she can't handle it and she sees this guy and she tells herself well this must be the one he's going to be the end of my pain he's going to help have you ever invested your money your time your emotions into something or someone that you think this is it but after you've given all you end up with nothing in return can you understand her predicament the bible 
in the 26th verse in this volley of Greek participles in its deep rooted explanation said that she had pascal many things under upo many physicians she had placed her self in their hand she has placed her expectation and her hope listen to me carefully if your hope is not in Jesus your hope is misplaced I said if your hope is not in Jesus your hope is misplaced if your hope is in your church position if your hope is in your professional position if your hope is in some friend hear me the ruler of the synagogue positioned her ho his hope in Jesus he threw himself down he cross canoe cross canoe means he prostrate himself it was literally a symbol of full surrender and an act of worship at the same time we want God to fix our stuff, but we won't give him all to fix our stuff. We fail to think, we fail to know, we fail to understand that God will not be God at all unless he is God of all. Why do you think some backsliders find it so hard to come back to Jesus? They want a little bit of the church and a whole lot of the world at the same time. But you've got to understand, until you are willing to cross canoe, until you are willing to throw yourself completely at the feet of Jesus in full surrender, it never mattered how much money Jairus had. His money could not fix his problem. Never mattered his high position as church president. It couldn't fix his problem. There are some things about us that only can be fixed by the God who made us. I said there are some things about us that can only be fixed by the God who made us. And until from deep within us, we are connected to the God who is above us. We'll be surrounded by the stuff that's around us. I just said something. Unless from deep inside of us, we are connected truly to the God who is above us. We'll be destroyed by the stuff that is around us. Are you listening to me? The silent sufferer. The Bible said. In the 27th verse, and when she had heard of Jesus, there's something about the Greek text that I love. The King James omit the presence of the definite article before the name Jesus. And so Holy Ghost led me to look at the text. And I found out that in the Greek text, there is a definite article before the name Jesus. I said, Holy Ghost, help me understand something. Holy Ghost said, preacher, there were many who would go by the name Jesus. It was a common name. But in the Greek text, the article said, the Jesus. When she has heard of the Jesus, well, it is the Jesus who walked on water. It is the Jesus who healed the sick. It is the Jesus who raised the dead. It is the Jesus who came as the son of the living God, the author and the finisher of my faith. So the Greek text has there the presence of the definite article before the name Jesus. You've got to understand, I don't care what the world says about him. I just know there's only one name given among men whereby we must be saved. That's the name of the Jesus. There's only, there's only one savior who's the way maker. Are you listening to me? Come on, son, pump me up on this microphone. Hear the preacher. Why do you think 
I still obey the Ten Commandments. Because that Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Why do you think that in spite of what the Pope and the reverence and the bishop says, I still believe that the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord God. Because that Jesus said, as his custom was, as his habit was, are you listening to me? Lord, there's so much flooding my mind, but let me come back to the text. In the text, in the 27th verse, when she had heard of the Jesus, she came in the press and touched his garment. I told you that Matthew, Mark, and Luke present some pieces that you have to pull them all together. So Luke said she touched his garment. No. Mark said that. Mark said she came in the crowd, touched his garment. Luke 8.44 said she touched the border. Say border. She touched the border of his garment. Now, when you look at Matthew, you discover the presence of something that Mark and Luke didn't touch. So if you jump to Matthew, I think it's chapter 9, 20 and 21. So Luke has a longer passage, Mark has a longer, but, but Matthew has, Matthew 9, 20, and 21. And behold, a woman who was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the Hear me. Touch the. I can't hear you. Touch the. Now, now, Mark said she touched his garment. Luke said in Luke 8.44, she touched the border of his garment. Are you still with me? But Matthew introduced a word that has both Greek and Hebrew connection. You see, you've got, when you look at Matthew's H-E-M, it's the Greek Z-I-Z-I-T-H, or Z-I-Z-I-T-H, Zizith. What does that mean, preacher? You go back to the Old Testament, but let me tell you what I told you. Remember the text said, she said she's looking for the Jesus. If I could touch the Jesus. Because he is a rare rabbi. Follow me carefully. Follow me carefully. Now, now in the context of the book of Numbers, God said when he's leading Israel, he said especially of the leaders who represent him. Let them make fringes in the borders of their garment with a ribbon of blue. Zizith is 14 stitches, seven vertical, seven horizontal, 14 stitches formed what you call the zizith or the hem. It was an external symbol that he who has that particular zizit is a legit teacher of God. The zizit said you are legit and so she said I want to see the Jesus because the others have no border with the stitch 
I'm looking for that particular sign. She never said, if I touch his sleeve. She never, she said, if I touch, this is it. If I touch the symbol of his loyalty to the father, the other Jesus, don't have that kind of connection. I'm looking for the Jesus, Bethlehem's baby. I'm looking for the Jesus, the promised Messiah. I'm looking for the Jesus, the one who's all God and all man at the same time. Hear the preacher. If you go and get spiritual salvation, it can't come from anybody. It has got to come from one somebody. Are you listening to the preacher? And that's why you must be careful as to who your teacher is. Follow the preacher. She's coming in the crowd. Notice if you will. Up to this point, she isn't even supposed to be in the crowd. Listen to me carefully. Some of us don't like crowd. But I discover when you've got real trouble, even the most private ones of us don't mind the crowd. Are you listening to me? When Hurricane Ivan sat over the Cayman Islands for a few hours, Malt Cayman is the fifth largest financial center in the world. My first visit there, I discovered on their stats, they had 18,000 vehicles. But 13,000 Caymanians. Listen to me carefully. Hurricane Ivan sat over the tiny dot and when Ivan was finished and telephone connection was restored my brother-in-law said he was standing in line with bank managers and multi-billionaires standing in the same line waiting for a cup of hot soup money in the bank and they can't touch it financial assets and they can't touch it they, they, I went to Cayman and I can't call his name uh, uh, she was uh, 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 if I call if I say the position you're going to know who she is but, but, but they, they gave me their private personal bedroom and they took the guest room and the thing I remember about the bedroom is that I press a button and my pillow comes up press another and my foot goes down I press a button and my sheet gets warm. Are you listening to me? Hear the preacher. When trouble comes, trouble has a way of lining us up in the same group. I said the Bible said, the Bible said, she's a silent sufferer. Shouldn't be in the crowd. But when she realized that this is where she going to find the answer. This is where she going to find him. She doesn't care what the crowd thinks. Let the world say what the world want to say. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Because I want to see my Jesus someday. You got to pull Matthew and Mark and Luke together. To get the full story and the essence of the silent sufferer. I'm not done. But let me tell you something else. I told you. Regularly Mark says garment. Luke said border. Matthew said hem. I told you that to get an understanding of that. Got to go to the Greek and the Hebrew. It'll take you back to the instruction of Jesus. The instruction of God to his Old Testament folk. He said, listen, let them make me garments with fringes or ribbons of blue stitch in their garments so that it will remind them to be loyal it came to a time where the priests by reason of their function that the, the zit of 14 stitches 7 vertical and 7 horizontal you can't be vertically connected to God and be disconnected horizontally from the people around you listen to me 
So when the woman said, I want to touch the Jesus, clear in her mind, listen to me, the text said, when she heard about him, so by reason then of common deduction, she had not yet seen him. She's in a crowd looking for somebody she has not yet met. But she already has the identifying features. I said she has the identifying marks. If you go look for the church of the living God, you can't take just any ordinary church. Got to look for one with the divine identification. Got to look for one with the vertical connection and horizontal connection. If you go look for the church of the living God, you've got to look for one that is biblically directed, Holy Ghost filled, doctrinally relevant are you listening to the preacher I wish I could preach it like I feel it hear the preacher hear the preacher for she said for she said if I may touch but his clothes Let's go to Matthew. Well, before I go to Matthew, let me jump to Luke and play with Luke a little bit. Let's jump to Luke 8. Let, let's jump to Brother Luke. So we are Luke 8. Let's look at 43. And a certain woman having an issue of blood 12 years had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. Come to Matthew. Matthew chapter 9. What book did I say? I'm taking my time. But I'm almost done. Matthew chapter 9. And the story is captured just in two digga digga verses. Verse 20. And behold a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. This silent sufferer for she said, watch this. Here's a statement that Mark never had, Luke doesn't have, but Matthew thought it important. For she said within herself. I call this functional autonomy. I call this intrinsic motivation. Are you listening to me? She said within herself. It wasn't the Bible worker who told her. It wasn't the preacher who told her. But she's out in seven corners. She's out in yo-yo corner. She's out in, give me some Santa Cruz Road. Brighton. She's out in New River. Punch had a garage up a certain, she's out in Leeds and is it Northampton and Southampton? And she's out in Lovely Point. And she heard a tent is down yonder. Not from the Bible worker. Not from the preacher. Not, but, but, but she heard. Maybe she was sitting down under a tree. And heard folk talking. And she listened. And she said within herself it means she didn't tell anybody but but the reason i love the greek text is that that phrase is written in the imperfect tense what does it mean preacher it means she continued to say within herself notice if you will she is bleeding for 12 years 
She is penniless. She is hungry. She has no one to help. She spent everything. She's tired of doctors. Tired of a pharmacist. Tired of stuff. Tired of suffering. Have you ever been sick and tired? Of being sick and tired. She came to the edge. And she knew now. I want more than what some of these want. Some of these may just want bread and fish. Listen to the preacher. When you look clearly and carefully at what Luke says, Luke gives you the meaning that she is hemorrhaging and suffering and Luke connects two critical issues. Luke in the use of his choice Greek, he said she is suffering physically and shamefully. Could it be that you're ashamed sometimes of the things that's causing you pain? Could it be that you are ashamed sometimes of the things that's causing you hurt? Could it be that deep down in your heart, you've tried everything you could try. You've trusted everybody you could trust. And you're still left empty and broken. What do you do when you can't stand to look in the mirror and you can't run from yourself? What do you do when you get to the place where you can't trust anybody else and you're tired of living by yourself? Tired of your tears. Tired of your pain. Tired of being misunderstood and mistreated. Tired of folk looking down on you just because of how you look. Go to bed and you can't sleep because sleep won't come. Tired. The day is long and the night is even longer. Tired. And you said, God, where are you? I can't carry this by myself anymore. Can't commit suicide because that's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. You wake up in the morning wondering if today will be a different day. You're wondering if, if she comes to the crowd and she's looking for that Jesus. That sea walking Jesus. She's looking for that Jesus who cast devils out of a man and caused him to be in his right mind. Looking for that Jesus who doesn't care what you look like, what you smell like, what you sound like, how broken you are. He, she's looking for that Jesus. And the Bible said, she said within herself, you've got to get to the place. Got to get to the place where you don't care what the world says. You just know that you know that you know it's my time. It's my time, Jesus it's my time. I've been around burdens too long. I've been around suffering too long. It's my time, Jesus. It's my time. I've tried everything else. I don't care because I've got nothing else to lose. So she's in the crowd. And she kept on saying, the imperfect tense, she kept on saying to herself. She kept on. You see, when you come to the place where you know this is it, 
The devil gonna try to take your mind to some stuff. Remember when you got baptized some years ago and you turned back? Why do you think this time gonna be any different? But she kept saying within herself, it's my time. It's my time. I don't care what the crowd does to me. Listen to me as she is pressing through the crowd. They are bouncing her here and bouncing her there. And she's already weak. And sometimes they bounce her over and she falls flat on the ground. But she got up because she said, it's my time, devil. It's my time. She keep on getting up. They knock her down. But she got up again. She said, devil, today is my time. They knocked her down again but she got up and this time it took her longer because she is weaker she's weaker but each time circumstances knocked her down the Greek text says she kept on saying within herself she kept on saying within herself it's my time it's my day it's my time devil you should have killed me last night but today devil today is my time I'm not not going hallelujah I'm not going back the same way I came here the imperfect tense that she kept on saying it she kept on saying it she's refusing to be discouraged she's refusing to allow her fear to be stronger than her faith she's refusing to allow her circumstances to tell her it's impossible. Uh, what are the, 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 the if that I want to dwell on? Where, where, where God says, if you can believe with a man, it may be impossible. But with God, all things are possible. She, she kept on saying, she kept on saying within herself she doesn't need anybody else now because today she's saying God it's you and me God it's you and me I got nobody else to depend on no shoulder to lean on but if you could have made a life from the dust of the ground. If for 12 years circumstances may have reduced my life to dust. I'm putting the dust back in the hands of the sovereign God. She kept saying within herself. It's my time. It's my time. This is my day. This is my opportunity. This is my moment. I've tried stuff. It's 12 years, you know. And each year has 365 days. And she's been bleeding every day. But this day, this day, she said, devil, you should have killed me yesterday. As a matter of fact, devil, you almost killed me already. But this time is my time. If you knock me down a thousand times, I'm going to get up. Because I will not stop until I touch the Jesus. The Jesus whom angels said, thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. He's going to be God with us. I want to touch the Jesus. The Jesus who said I'm come. That you may have life and have it more abundantly. The Jesus who would crush the serpent's head. The Jesus who'd be wounded for my transgressions. The Jesus who'd be bruised for my iniquity. I want to touch the Jesus. I'm done. I'm done. Today, I believe it's still the blood. I believe it's still the blood 
that saves from sin. I believe it's still the blood that cleanses within. From the highest star in heaven to the depths of the sea. It's still the blood of Jesus that brings victory to every defeated soul. Victory to every hopeless sinner. Victory, no matter what your defeat may have been, it is still the blood. I brought some cards. I brought one for myself. And I'm going to ask my pastors and Bible counselors and ushers and elders and deacons to help me quickly get the cards in everybody's hand. I thought we had already shared up those cards. I want to get the cards in everybody's hand. I'm done. Come on, my friends. I want to get the cards in every hand. I gave the card to someone to have them distributed. I want to get the cards in every hand. Listen to me. Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue, got to the place where he understood with all of your church membership you still need Jesus. With all of your church position, with all of your presidency, we still need Jesus. And I'm going to ask, I see ushers down the back, I don't have any down the front. I need the cards, come on beloved, come on. I need the cards in, in every hand, I need the cards in every hand, come on. If you have the cards, uh, let's cover Let's cover. Let's cover. I need the, we have more than enough of the same card. Let me read what's on the card so that you don't have to make any mistake. I, I really am hoping that we really have our hands together as we cover the card today. And it's the blue card. It may look similar. But it's somewhat different from the one you got last week. They're going to sing the song. And while they're singing the song, I hope you walk with the cards and you walk with the pencils and you walk with the pens. Don't just walk with the cards. They are pencils and pens right where the cards are stored. I hope you walk with the cards. Put a card, sir. Put a card in every... Listen to my instructions, sir. Put a card in every hand. Don't just hold up the card. Put a card in every hand. Put a card in every hand. Put a card in every hand, please. And walk with the pencils. Walk with the pens. The, the cards and the pencils and the pens are in the same location. The card simply said, I don't want to die in the sinful state I'm in. Please pray for me. I need help. I need a breakthrough in full surrender. We come to church. We're partially surrendered. That's why our lifestyle only have partial victory. We come to church. We're only half committed. We come to church. But we have no spiritual breakthrough. We come to church to seem like God and us are not on speaking terms. The first statement says, I don't want to die in the sinful state I'm in. Please pray for me. I need help. I need a spiritual, I need a breakthrough in full surrender. The second statement says, I'm a backslider who desperately wants to come back to Jesus. I need a backslider. I'm a backslider who desperately, the woman was desperate to find that Jesus. Desperate not to touch any and anybody, but desperate enough that the crowd couldn't stop her. Her weakness couldn't stop her. Desperate enough. Though she's been knocked down several times, she kept on pressing forward. The next statement is, I am a Christian of another denomination, 
but I want to obey all God's commandments and follow Jesus. I want to obey all God's commandments. Are you desperate enough to go all the way with Jesus in obedience to his will? Are you desperate enough? I'm going to ask you to hold your card in your hand. Hold your card in your hand. I'll tell you what to do with it. Please hold your card in your own hands. Make sure everybody has a pencil or a pen. Or borrow from your neighbor while they sing. Fill the card out. Put a card in every hand. Put a card in every hand. While they sing. Fill the card out. The last statement says, by God's grace, I want to repent and be baptized. Listen while they sing and fill out your card. Have you ever tried to measure just one sin? Fill the card out. Seeking forgiveness. When your heart knows the pain But our God will not judge us On how big or how small But He just loves to have His blood To cover it all I don't know about you, but I thank God for the blood. I thank God for the efficacious blood of Jesus. I don't know about you, but every backslider who will ever be saved would have found victory through the blood. Doesn't matter where you've wandered or how broken you are would have found victory through the blood would have found hope in the blood 
of all the things that you do not now possess, what is the one thing you would trade everything for? I hope you would know that eternal life is worth trading everything for. I hope you would know that the assurance of salvation, the assurance of sins forgiven, transforming hope in Jesus Christ is worth changing or exchanging everything for. Was it not Jesus who said, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You have your card in your hand. I don't want you to give it to anybody. Hold your card in your hand. Follow my instruction. Hold your card in your hand. You hold your card. I did say that earlier. When you're through writing, hold your card in your hand. Listen to me. I told you last night that the one who went to Calvary is the only intercessor with the Holy Spirit at the right hand of God and the next time he moves he will say he that is unjust let it be unjust still there's a backslider right here today to the altar and today to the water let me say it again there's a backslider right here listen to me carefully I'm doing two things and then I'm done number one I'm going to ask my friend to stand right here with one bucket and I'm going to ask the other to stand right here with another I wanted seven but we seem to only have two We'll work with the two. We'll work with the two. Listen to me carefully. No distraction. Listen to me carefully. I don't know how long you've been hurting. I don't know how long you've been hemorrhaging. I don't know how long you've been defeated. I don't know how long you've been desperate trying to get out of your present condition. I just know that you know there needs to be a change. I just know that deep down you know there must be a change. I just know that deep down you know what God wants you to do. And if you haven't filled the card out, if you can't see clearly to write, if you've left your glasses, just ask any of the usher, any of the pastor, any of the Bible counselor to read the card for you and tell them where you want them to place the mark. But while they sing, I want you to exercise faith in God. Three ifs. If you will confess your sins, he is faithful and just. Three ifs. If you can believe, all things are possible. And the third, the woman said, if I could just make contact with Jesus. If I could just make contact with Jesus. Three ifs. If your life. And a little faith. It's not worth living. A little faith. And your hope. That still believe. Sinking fast. That you can rise again. If 
Your feet. A little faith. A still believe that God can fix your situation. A little faith that still believe since you're not yet dead, you're not yet done. To your future. The devil may have had a party over your future. But if you have he will a little faith, your life new meaning. He'll give your life new meaning. So hear me. I want you to exercise some faith. I want you to get up, walk down front, and put your own car in the bucket for yourself. I want you to walk down with your own car. I want you to walk down with your own car and instruct anybody to take any card from you. I want you to get up with your own card, exercising your own faith in Jesus. Exercising your own faith in Jesus. I want you to get up, walk down, and put your own card. Put your own card. Put your own card. Put your own card in any of these buckets. If your life is not worth living, listen to me. And your home three ifs fast and a little faith. Your feet three ifs and a little faith. From the rubble, she said, and the blast. She kept on saying. She kept on saying. She kept on saying to herself, I need to touch him. She kept on saying to herself, if I can just touch him. She kept on saying to herself, it's my time. It's my life. It's my future. It's my salvation. She kept on saying to herself, it's my salvation. Somebody, somebody touch me. yourself to the potter's house yes sir
potter's house. He mends broken lives. He can heal the broken, the wounded, the desperate. pastors and elders with your name in these buckets there's a prayer tent right next to my left that is used only for prayer I'm going to ask them to take all the cards representing your name and what you have written on the card. I'm going to ask them to go in that prayer tent. I'm going to ask them to put all of those cards, remove them from the bucket when they get in the prayer tent. I'm going to ask them to hold your cards in their hand because I need God to do something for you while they are praying for you. I know the devil is standing up in somebody's life. I know the devil has locked somebody in a prison cell. And today we are here on battle, on a battlefield. I'm going to ask them right now to go straight to that prayer tent. I'm going to ask them as soon as they get inside the prayer tent. They're going to take the cards out of the bucket. They are going to hold your name in their hands. I'm going to ask the group to sing. I know the Lord will fix it. Hear the preacher, hear the preacher, hear the preacher. You walk down here with your card, with your name. You wrote your own card. You wrote your card. You place your card in that bucket. I'm asking them now to go to that room. They have gone now to the room, but the Holy Ghost wants something else to be done. There are some folk down front. They've made up their minds to be baptized. I'm going to ask all the persons you've made your mind up to be baptized. I know the Lord has been working on your case. I want you now, even before they listen to me, I want you to get up and meet me down here. You've made your mind up to be baptized. You've made your mind up to be baptized. Wherever you are sitting, Come, come. I want you to come. You've made your mind up to be baptized. I don't care what the devil in hell is doing. I want you to get up now and come. Come from wherever you are. Come on right now. Come on right now. Maybe you're outside. Maybe you are on the outside. I want you to come right now. Wherever you're sitting down. Wherever you are, you've made your mind up to be baptized. I want you to get up right now and come. They are praying in there with your name in their hands. They are praying in there with your name in their hands. They are praying in there with your name in their hands. I want you to get up right now. Yes, you. Yes, you. I want you to get up and come. Made your mind up to be baptized. 
Make your time and come. Doesn't matter where your clothes may be. You can come without it. You can come without it. You've made your mind up to be baptized. Come on. Come on to Jesus. Come on by the grace of God. Come just as you are. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. I see you come, young ladies, dressed alike. Come on to Jesus. Come on to Jesus. You've made your mind up to be baptized. Now is your time to come. I said, now is your time to come. Get up and come. Come in the name of the Father. Hallelujah. Come in the name of the Son of God. Come in the name of the Holy Ghost. You're still there. You're still there. You're still there. Today is your day of baptism. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. You can make it for God is able. Come on. Come on. I'm going to ask the Bible counselors to walk in the tent. Walk down in the tent. You know the persons that you've been working with and praying with. Walk down in the tent. Encourage them. Walk with them. I said walk with them. Is there anybody else up in here today? Get up and come. Come on to Jesus. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. While the pastors are in there praying for you, the Holy Ghost is in here working on you. While the pastors are in there praying for you, and Christ is at the right hand of God interceding for you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Hold a moment. Hold a moment. There's a battle that's raging. I said there's a battle that's raging. But the woman said within herself, she said, it's my time, devil. She said, devil, I don't know what will happen tomorrow. But right now, I know I'm going to touch him. I'm going to put my life in his hands. I see somebody else coming. Here's the call. Here's the call. I'm a straight forward preacher. Here's the call. Maybe you left your home this morning. Maybe you've been battling with it. Maybe you've been thinking about it. Maybe God knows deep down in your heart, you know you need to be baptized. What you're saying, preacher, I don't have the strength. The woman never had it, but she was determined to be healed. She was determined to be cured. Let me ask you one question. How badly do you want to be saved? How deeply do you want to be converted? How desperate are you to break free from sin. If that's you, get up right now. God bless you, young lady. Get up right now and walk down this step. Come on, backslider. I know you're there. I know you're there. I know you're hurting. I'm almost done. I'm going to ask the church to stand. I'm going to ask the church to stand. And I'm going to ask the Bible workers, the pastors, get a gown for those who are standing right here before me. Because I need somebody else down there. I need somebody else down there to come and take their gown from my hand. I want you to give a gown to all these who are standing here with their minds made up to be baptized. Because I know the Lord is going to fix it for somebody else. Yes, sir, this is your day. Sing the song, child. Sing the song. Sing the song. Sing the song. I just sing the song. Seem to break free. Yeah. Somebody else is coming. Sing the song. I get down on my sing knees. The song. And I pray to the Lord. And he Can I have the gowns for these who are standing down front?
the Lord will. I know the Lord. I know He'll fix it. He'll fix it. I know He'll fix it for me. Could you hold a moment? Could you hold a moment? What He plays softly. What He plays softly, sir. Don't go back. Don't go back the same way you came here. Listen to me, Boxlider. Don't go back the same way you came here. We're putting a gown in the hand of every candidate standing at this altar. And when they're through getting their gown, I want to invite you. I want to invite you to do what God is doing in their lives right this moment I'm making sure every candidate at the altar has a gown hold it on your hand or put it on your shoulder I want to make sure every candidate at the altar has a gown I want to make sure every candidate at the altar has a gown. I won't move until every candidate at this altar Listen to me. I'm closing my Bible. When she touched Jesus, he asked, Who touched me? And the crowd said, What a stupid question. Can't you see the crowd is bouncing on you? Then Jesus said, somebody. For the crowd, she was a nobody. But Jesus said, somebody. Somebody. For the crowd, you may be a nobody. But God wants you to be heaven's somebody today. If you're out there and you know this is your day, to be heaven's somebody I want you I don't care what crowd is looking on you I'm fastening my eyes looking for God's somebody you may have become the devil's football but today God wants you to be his somebody you may be a nameless member of the crowd but you need to go home today as a brand new creature because God wants to make you his somebody. Where are you? Where are you? Tired of crying yourself to sleep? Tired of the broken life, sir? Come on. Come. Come in the name of Jesus Christ. Give God your life and start anew. I know you don't think you have the power and you don't have it. But Jesus has just what you need. Listen to me, lady. I'm holding up the service. Four more minutes for you to come. Break from the past. Come on home, backslider. Come on home. Maybe you've never been a baptized member of the church. But you know God is calling you. You know this is God's church. You know this is God's truth. You know this is God's word that you have heard. What shall it profit 
if you gain all you're looking for and lose your soul this is my last call would you sing the song one last time I'm looking for you I'm looking for you seconds left. young man I see you come if you're coming come right now don't go back home the same way you came here if you're coming come right I wish I had a gown on my hand to put in your hand I wish I had a gown on my hand to put in your hand and I'm gonna ask that young man I'm going to ask that young man who walked from down the back. I'm going to ask him to come and take this gown from my hand. Today, by the grace of Almighty God, it needs to be a change. I see somebody else coming. I see somebody else coming. The power of the living God be with you, son. And the same God who's got power to heal got power to change your life today if you believe in him may the lord god work on your heart and lead you to full surrender god bless you and this young lady has walked down front and i'm going to hand her listen to me the lord god be with you may he grant you the power not just to touch him but to live for him somebody else today somebody else today 
come on. Come, come, Don't just go back home the same way you came here. Come on. This is your change day. Come on. This is your day for a new life. Come on. Come on. You're struggling. But your victory is in the making. Come on. I wish I had a gown to hand to you. But in the name of Jesus, you need to come. This is your moment for a changed life. I want to stop, but something keeps prodding me to go on. I know a man who can fix it for you. That Jesus, the Jesus, son of the living God. I've gone two minutes past my closing time. I've gone two minutes past my closing time. With a gown on my arm. A gown on my arm. For some child of God who's wandered from him. For how much longer will you stay in that condition? This gown is yours. I said this robe on my hand is yours. Come. He wants to change your life. He wants to fix it for you. I don't care how weak you are. I don't care the chains of hell that may be challenging you. I know somebody who wants to set you free. I know a man who wants to give you freedom from sin. Power to live right. Why don't you come? Why don't you come, lady? You know he's calling you. You know he's calling you. This last gown on my hand belonged to a backslider out there. This last gown on my hand belonged to somebody out there. Today to the altar, today to the water. Maybe you've never been baptized before, but today, 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 this is your day. This is your moment. This gown on my hand belonged to you. I want you to come forward and take this robe that represents your decision to turn your life over to Jesus. Your decision to live a new life. God bless you, young man. God bless you. Your decision to live a new life. Your decision for a brand new start. I'm done. I'm done. Some call him. It's time to pray. And no one loves you. And your life is all of it. I know a man. She kept on saying within herself. It's my time. I just need to touch him. She kept on saying within herself. And every time some discouraging thought enters her mind, she kept on saying within herself, I'm going to touch him. Every time some discouragement comes up, they knocked her over, but she kept on getting up. She kept on saying, I'm going to touch him with our heads bowed. I just feel there's one other soul today who need to make that decision. Knowing it's Jesus. Knowing it's Jesus. It's a Jesus crowning my soul. Right.
I have touched the hem of his garment. And his blood. Lord our God we've come to this place today neath the hot burning sun we thank you for the gentle blowing of your Holy Spirit in this place we thank you for the cooling wind Blowing away the heat of our lives. Have mercy on somebody here. Somebody who you've brought from their home. Somebody whom you've brought here for a new beginning, a fresh start a new life. God, there's somebody here sick and tired of the same old story. And when this tent would have come down, the devil will laugh at somebody who's had this opportunity but who never made use of it. When the tent comes down soon, God, the devil will laugh at somebody so close but didn't make that ultimate surrender. Walk between the rows one more time before we get done by the riverside. Grand victory to a struggling heart. God, for all these persons at this altar, there's no one standing here that you can't save. There's no one standing here that you can't make whole. We go now from this place. We go down to the riverside. Lord, may the devil never discourage anyone. But may somebody else Come to make the decision for full surrender. Write their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. Grant them a new robe, a new name in glory. And all we can say is thank you, Lord, for the preaching of the gospel. Thank you for the proclamation of your word. Thank you for the invitation to those who have heard. Thank you for the decision of those who have responded. Thank you for the promise that you've given that never failed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to have the shortened vows. The buses have been prepared. And right after the vows, we'll have the prayer and we'll go straight to the bus. We'll go next down to the road towards Praise River. And the baptismal service is right by the side of the road. You can't miss it. But I make one last appeal. I know there are others here. You may have signed up the card and you're dilly-dallying. I'm going in the room to pray for you while Pastor Powell administer the vows may God be with you amen amen heaven is celebrating today what do you say church God is powerful we thank God for his man's servant and the message today and while you're standing here those of you who have surrendered your heart to Jesus and in a little while you'll be baptized we have um, just three vows that we are asking you to answer to by the raising of your right hand as I shall read them, right? Do you, and, do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord? 
And do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with him? Amen. Do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these teachings? Amen. The final one. Do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ? To be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and to also support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, tithes and offerings and a life of service. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, church. They have responded in the affirmative with somebody down there, a member of the church. Move that these be accepted. Subject to their baptism. Move second. All agree, lift your right hand. Look at the tent. I want the candidates to look at the tent. Look at the tent. All those hands. They are saying, we are celebrating with you. All right, let us pray. Father, we ask now your direct traffic as we leave here to the place of baptism. I pray, God, that you lead us, protect us, guide us. Let us have a wonderful afternoon in baptism, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. amen, amen. Members of the steering committee, you asked to meet right after lunch. Pastor Kimar Allen would like to meet me to members of the steering committee. Bible workers, please don't leave your candidates. Go with them, hold their hands, and the buses are waiting uh, up on that side to my left. They are waiting, so, so Bible workers, please. Make sure don't leave your candidates, hold their hands, guide them to the bus. The buses are waiting uh, for both you and the candidates. All right? So we bless the Lord for, for what he has done. And, and we give, give thanks. The anointed singers will take us out of here with rich music. All right? <laughs>